Have your way. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Let's go ahead and get into the word. Can you handle the scriptures for me this morning? We're gonna we're gonna turn to Revelation 19 and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna read verses 5 through 10. We're gonna be in Revelation 19, verses 5 through 10. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for showing up this morning into the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. And the voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. <coughs> Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The principal point and the title of my message this morning is the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I yield my tongue to you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would be the voice of prophecy this morning and that you would simply use me, Lord God, as an oracle, Lord, to speak forth the word that you are saying to your church, O Lord God, in these days, to this church, O Lord God. I pray that you would anoint it with the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray, O Lord God, that you would allow it to reach deep inside of the hearts of every hearer. And that you, O oh Lord God, would cause it to produce fruit in the life. Amen. Amen. So this depicts the end. Blessed are the saints of God who trusted in the testimony of the Lamb. Amen. The bride of Christ, she accepted the marriage proposal. How does one get married to God? It's through salvation. Amen. It's through whenever you heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you heard the truth of the word of God that teaches that all men are born sinners in Adam, but that God sent the second Adam, the last Adam, to make right what the first Adam made wrong. And what the last Adam did was he offered his sinless life on the cross to pay the penalty of the sins of the human race. And whenever you believe that in your heart. And receive that into your heart. The Bible says that when a man believes with his heart. And confesses with his mouth. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And that he was raised from the dead. That he becomes saved. And the Bible teaches that at that moment. That very moment. The spirit of God moves into his heart. And begins to reorder his life. Begins to reconstruct. We talked about it Wednesday night. Whenever he, he basically does surgery. According to the passage in Ezekiel. Cuts our chest open. Says, look at that stony heart. We won't need that anymore. Get that out of the way. Let me replace it with a heart of flesh. What does that mean? A heart that's going to be molded. A heart that's willing to listen to my voice. That's what a bride looks like. A heart that's willing to listen to the voice of her husband. A, boy, a, a, a bride that's willing to listen to the, that submit to the voice of her husband. I didn't write it. The Holy Spirit wrote it. Wives, submit ye to your husband. Husbands, love your wives like Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it and died for it as he hung naked for her and he gave his life and sacrificed and in love for her. And that's how the bride married her bridegroom. And now this is the end. And she's dressed. She's pure. She's dressed in white garments. She's been made right 
by the blood of the last. But she also yielded her ear. She yielded her ear to the voice of the bridegroom and she responded through obedience. That's how she got here. She didn't get here through years and years of rebellion. No, because that would be a bride with spot and blemish. And that's not the kind of bride that the Lord is coming back for. So I have good news for you. While all the time his bride falls short of the glory of God, he, when he begins to pour out his spirit, he begins to convict the heart. He begins to speak, and the bride becomes reverential and fearful of the God that she serves. Listen, yesterday I was headed to work, and I went in. I don't know why I had my sunglasses on. I was in a hurry. And the girl that was working at the counter, she says, are you okay? Because she's familiar with me, but I hadn't seen her in a while. I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. You sure? I'm like, yeah. And I realized I had my sunglasses on. Realized I was probably in a hurry. So I took my sunglasses off. And I said, man, I've just been working a lot. I'm in a hurry. And I just got out of prayer. So I'm kind of feeling a little bit pensive right now. But then the Holy Spirit said, that's no, that's not what you need to say. <laughs> and so I said, listen, you know what the Lord's been showing me? The Lord's been showing me that something's about to shift. That things are about to start happening and that he loves you so much. And you know what she said? She said the same thing, Bill, that all them people at the Mardi Gras parade route were telling me. As you were carrying that cross and I was looking them in the eyes and talking to them. She said, I love God. You know what I said? I said, I know you love God. The problem is, ain't nobody serving God. The problem is everybody's saying that they love God. But nobody's serving God. And it's going to be bad when the Lord comes back and he's looking for somebody that was being faithful while he was gone. And the bride was being disobedient to the voice of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord. We all need your help. But here she is. See, in God's eyes, a bride is faithful. She's opposite of a harlot. The only reason I even bring that up is because the Bible speaks of it. The Bible speaks throughout the scriptures of a bride that's going to marry a prince or a king and a harlot, the seductress. She's throughout. She's the Proverbs 7 woman. She's Jezebel with a literal name. She's the spirit of Jezebel. She's Revelation 17 woman riding the back of the beast. The harlot is trying to interrupt and to corrupt the wedding between the bride and the bridegroom. This has been upon the face of the earth for countless thousands of years of human history. The Lord says that he's marrying a bride and he has her dressed in white linen. Don't you, aren't you glad to know this morning that you're not making it in on your own righteousness, but you're making it in on the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But let us not like I've been saying, cover ourselves under the blanket of justification and feel all comfy cozy and forget the fact that the Lord also wants our ear. He wants our ear and he wants us to hear the voice of the Lord and he wants us to respond. And the more we respond, the more he will speak. And the more he speaks and we respond, the more he will speak and he will lead and guide us in truth. Amen. So again, her garment is white. She celebrates victory with her king. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now look, when put to canvas, like an artist with a paintbrush, when put to canvas, the spirit of prophecy paints the visual story of Jesus. The strokes applied with the writer's quill written over thousands of years, painted through the mouths of multiple prophets. Let me say that again. The voice of prophecy, painting a picture, it's coming to life, my friend. He's, he's adding the final little adjustments right now where we are. You've got to listen to what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you we are in the midst of it. We are in the brink of it. I believe it with my very heart. I believe it with everything that is on the inside of me, that he's adding the little shades a fine detail, and he's bringing the painting together. Multiple mouths at various times that it's all taking their turn to produce the work that is the testimony of Jesus. And the first testimony of the spirit of prophecy came from God himself. 
in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Many of you are familiar with this passage. We've used it a lot. But I'm trying to talk to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Imagine a canvas. And imagine the mouth of God as the spirit of prophecy, as the voice of prophecy begins to speak. And he begins to paint up, up on the canvas. And he paints this right here. I will put enmity between the sea, between thee and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, it shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The spirit of prophecy speaks the first word through the mouth of God in the garden after the fall. What he proclaims is that the seed of the woman, which ultimately would be fulfilled in Jesus, was going to bruise. But if you read it in the original language, it means to crush the head of the serpent. That I, I was a little boy. I wasn't a big hunter, but we used to hang out in the woods. And one thing I learned quick, whenever that snake tries to jump up on you, you just got to get rid of his head. You remove his head from him, you crush his head, he's useless, he can't get you. That's what that's talking about. Defeating the authority. Also in the Bible, the word head describes authority. Jesus is the head, the church is the body. The head describes authority. Jesus was manifest upon the earth for a divine purpose that was prophesied in the garden and has now come to pass and the whole thing is about to come to fulfillment. But the purpose of Jesus was to crush the head of the serpent and so that you and I could have access to eternal life. But it's much bigger. That's for you. That's for you and me. That's for our personal salvation so that we could be saved from darkness and into light so that we could have the opportunity to be filled by the spirit of God so that we could have the grace that we need in order to serve God so that one day we can be clothed in white linen and in righteousness we shall be clothed and we can make it to the marriage supper of the Lamb. This ain't no joke, my friend. This stuff is real. This stuff is written. God is real and he poured out of heaven its most prized possession and his name is Jesus Amen. and if and, and I, Lord help the people that might be watching today that don't believe Lord help the people that we speak to that don't believe Lord increase the anointing in our life increase the anointing on the words that we speak that it not be we that speak it but that it be your Holy Spirit that penetrate their heart that they not be lost that they not perish The rebellion of sin caused devastation for man, but the spirit of prophecy provides the solution that his dying spirit is craving. Man rebelled, but the source of the rebellion was the serpent. And this prophecy is directed towards the serpent. The serpent's rebellion, you need to understand this, started long before the garden story. We must understand that the spirit of prophecy will find its fulfillment in God's judgment over the fallen angels that rebelled against him. I don't have time to really break this down right now, but Paul speaks in one of his letters, brother takes brother to their court. Don't you know that we will one day judge angels? In some way, God is going to use human beings that are redeemed by the blood of the lamb to, to cast court and to cast judgment over fallen angels that rebelled against his kingdom plan. I could explain to you how I think that's going to go, but we don't have time for that this morning. He's going to, and, and, and God's plan includes man. He's going to defeat the angelic rebellion using man as a conduit. And when we declare this truth, we preach the kingdom of God. We preach God's victory over evil and God's salvation offered to man. God prophesied that the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. The spirit of prophecy, I need you to understand this. This is part of that. I feel it so, so deeply and so full in my spirit will soon find its fulfillment. Now, listen, you got to understand something. When I say soon, oh, what are you saying, preacher? You setting a date? I, no, I'm not setting a date. One day with the Lord is like a thousand. A thousand is like one with the Lord. Well, we've been in human history for 6,000 years. At least. According to what most people believe, the apostle Paul said we're nearer now to our salvation than when we first began. But need I remind you that COVID didn't just accidentally uh, fall into a Chinese market because some Chinese scientists, come on, yeah, I'm being facetious because it's ridiculousness. 
what the spirit of error is lying to people and we just sit comfy cozy in our bed and turn over and go back to sleep and we act like something ain't happening on this earth. Oh, the, the Chinese scientists just must have walked into the market and accidentally dropped a little COVID in the market. No, come on, man. They might be other people. And ain't nobody believing that garbage. I mean, a very small few, maybe. The very small, small few are believing the COVID story. Most people are like, they just don't want to talk about it. Most people don't want to talk about it. But I'm done. I'm done with the ridiculousness. Because the king's about to come back. And this world is full of darkness. And the spirit of error is ramping up. And darkness is ramping up. And God is telling me in my prayer time, I'm about to pour my spirit out. And I'm about to raise up some prophets upon this earth. And I'm about to put my spirit and my voice in their mouth. And I'm about to get them to speak for me. Yeah. And I hope to God that you receive the spirit of God. And I hope to God that you come alive, man. I hope to God that the Holy Ghost will get a hold of your heart. And you'll quit all your time playing fantasy football. Oh, the preacher said I can't. I didn't say you can't play fantasy. That's between you and Jesus. I'm told, oh, why you want to? Like, don't get mad at me. I used to play five, had five teams at one time. I was a pastor. Come on, man. Could quit talking about how high a quarterback can jump or how far he can throw. Let's start talking about the lovely Jesus that died on the cross to set you free. Because you ain't going to be talking about how high. Well, Tom Brady couldn't jump very high if he wanted to. But you won't be talking about how far a quarterback can throw when you get into glory. If you make it into glory and you dress in that white garment, you're going to be at your feet. At the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Yes. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be crying holy, holy. Because we don't even have a clue. But listen, that guy Solomon, when he came here, you know how I made up that word worldling? Yeah, y'all heard me say that before. Little worldlings out here. But I like the way Solomon said it. He said, you little earthlings. He said, God, I'm up here speaking in you little earthlings. You don't even have a clue of what I am. You don't even have a clue. You're so far away in your mind of what I can do for you. You don't even understand what I'm about to do. You don't even understand what I've been doing. Even you who have been studying the word of God. I'm saying this now. Not him. I'm saying it. You, we're so far removed in our mind from what God is doing. I'm telling you, he's about to shake this earth. And the church, for the most part, is not prepared. I'm not. No more will you hear me act like I got it all figured out, church. Because the Lord is reminding me each and every day how little I know. And I, and I thank God that he has removed that critical spirit from me. I'm not about to allow a bunch of false doctrine to flood into the church of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you protect your church. But I'm going to tell you something right now. The Lord is showing me we got a long way to go because, look, he wants a spirit of unity yes. between the body of Christ. Yes. He wants to start in the house of God. Amen. Right. And he wants us to give people a chance. Right. He wants us to believe that maybe the people across the tracks, I mean, they may not want to talk to me, but I'm just saying it's a possibility that one of them churches across the street over there ain't really, it, it, it loves Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it's a good chance that a lot of them churches across the street, even over the bridge, Love Jesus. And the reality of it is, is that they may not be understanding some of the things that other people understand. And yes, the Holy Spirit wants them to understand it. But look, we got to get off our high hearts and, and quit believing that we're the only ones that got the truth. Because the truth is in the Word and we need the Lord to reveal it to our eyes. Amen? Amen. The spirit of prophecy will soon find its fulfillment. This age... Will soon find its end. The spirit of prophecy was for this time. Yeah, I want you to get that in your spirit. The spirit of prophecy, when it was first spoken in the garden, was for this time. That's right. This time, right here, where you start to see the spirit of God moving in this church. This is just the beginning. I'm telling you right now, I believe it with all my heart. As in spending time in prayer, and y'all been hearing me say this. As I started to ask the Lord, and he showed me a lot of things. I don't have time to get into all of it. Some of you already know because we watched the trailer video over here, and it's all intermeshed, and there's so much information in that. 
But what he started to show me is this. Just as evil spread across this globe through the coronavirus, I'm about to pour my spirit out upon this earth. He also said in one of the messages that we preached that the sleeping bride, I'm about to pour out the oil of my presence and her lamp is going to burn bright. And in this message here, you're going to see all of these things are coming together because God is about to do something. And the spirit of prophecy that started in the garden was for this time. I'm telling you, I believe with all of my heart that the majority of us will see something shift yes. spiritually that is going to transform yes. the way that this earth works. Thank you, Lord. It may not go down exactly the way we're expecting, but I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't know exactly how it's going to go down. I have some ideas, but I'm telling you right now, the Lord has been telling me in prayer, it's going to get, you know what he told me to tell him? Y'all already heard it, but let me say it again. At the parade route, well, two things. Number one, Tell them it's gonna, it's dark, but it's gonna get darker, but I'm about to pour my spirit out. And I'm gonna draw a line in the sand. Yes. And people are gonna have to make a choice. Yes. They're gonna either serve my son yes. or they're not. Right. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. And then he said this. And he said, I'm gonna show you people in the crowd, my son, that my seed has been planted in their hearts and they've been hiding. They've been running from me, but I see them. And I'm going to show you some of them. And when I show them to you, then I need you to tell them my nail scarred hands and my arms are wide open. And I see them. And I want you to tell them I'm with them. And I'm welcoming, welcoming them home. And you let them know that they can come home. Amen. And you heard the story. The Lord showed me at least four of them. Praise God. And that's the message. The spirit of prophecy, we're in this time. This is the time, amen, for these times to prepare God's people for service, to enlighten them to his plan. We are the church of the last days. You hear these things I'm telling you? We are the church of the last days. The spirit of prophecy finds its fulfillment in us. Moses prophesied about us, church. The spirit of prophecy from the garden to the mouth of Moses. You ready? You can actually put it on Numbers chapter 11, verse 27 through 29. But let me just tell you, the, whole, the Lord told Moses to allow the spirit to land upon 70 of the servants to do the ministry. Dude, that's exactly what the Lord is about to do. He's pouring his spirit out. He is awakening people, even in this church, this small church. I watched Brother Kirk speak that forth, speaking things over your life. After I started seeing it come alive, I started praying up in here by myself, praying the same thing, declaring it in the name of Jesus. And then I just asked y'all this morning, how many people talked about Jesus this week? And like three-fourths of y'all raise your hand. It is happening right now as we speak. And this is just the beginning. I'm telling you, as we continue to pray and seek the face of God together, the Holy Spirit's going to continue to move. He's going to start to cause the fire to burn in the side of us. The, the miracles that we've seen so far are just the beginning. He's going to begin to pour out his miracle working power. More people are going to get filled with the Holy Spirit because the Lord is desiring to cause the Spirit of God to fall upon his people that they would become prophets of God. And that's exactly what happened in this Numbers passage that they were prophesying in the camp after the Spirit of God had landed on the 70. There were two men inside the camp prophesying. Their name was Eldad and me dad. I don't know if there were brothers. Y'all heard me talk about them. Eldad's name means God has loved. Me dad's name means love. Look at Numbers chapter 11 verses 27 through 29. Eldad and me dad do prophesy in the camp. A young man came running and he told Joshua and Joshua the son of Nun the servant of Moses. One of his young men answered and said my Lord Moses forbid them. And Moses said unto him envious thou for my sake? I'll put in blue right here. God's moving in other churches. Praise God. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful because sometimes when we hear God's moving in somebody else's church, so <laughs> praise God. This is his church. This is his work. This is his kingdom. It's his blood that purchased his bride. Hallelujah. I just want to be under the downspout, my friend. I just want to make sure that I'm part of what he's doing, that we're part of what he's doing. Hallelujah. Would that, look, this is the part right here. You ready? Would God 
that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Did you hear what I just said? Amen. Now, y'all, I want you to think about this. 1,500 years before the day of Pentecost, Moses' mouth speaks forth the spirit of prophecy. And the spirit of prophecy used Moses to foretell the day that the spirit of God would pour out his spirit on the blood bought church so that all God's people could have the spirit on them. And so that all God's people could be prophets. And what is their message? The blood of the lamb that sets people free from sin. The Christ King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is the one. Look no further for truth. Pilate, he is Truth. In the words of Pontius Pilate in the face of the king, what is truth? I'm going to tell you, Pilate, I'm going to tell you listening here today, if you ain't convinced yet, his name is Jesus. You can keep searching. You can keep looking. You can keep looking for whatever you're looking to solace your pain. Whatever you're looking to know, but you ain't going to find truth in any other place. You ain't going to find truth in any other name. His name is Jesus. And the empty piece that you have in your heart, you just need to stick more Jesus in there. And it's going to start to putty the hole, my friend. Hallelujah. Quit looking for something else to make you happy. Because you're going to be like the children of Israel wandering in a wilderness. Wandering in a wilderness, constantly searching and never finding. Jesus told the Pharisees, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but they point to me and you will have none of me. The spirit of Elijah. See, we're talking, you see it from God's mouth to Moses' mouth. Oh, but the spirit of Elijah, Elijah, the prophet, I put in red. This is an important concept to this message. The spirit of of Elijah. Because, listen to me, a concept, not just a man. I need you to start thinking bigger than just one individual. I need you to start thinking about the big picture of God. God's people, Israel, were living in rebellion. King Ahab had married a woman named Jezebel. And let me just say this about Jezebel. We, got, we, we allow our little minds to think about in churches. Oh, Spirit of Jezebel, come up in the church. The seductress came into the church and she stole. The, she Listen, the spirit of Jezebel, that's just simply a spirit of lust that would be on a woman. Hey, is it that different than the spirit of Amnon that would be on a man? Who's Amnon? David's son. David's son that was so filled with lust that he wanted to sleep with his sister. You think there ain't men in this church that are full of lust that don't look at women in a way that they ought not look at women? You think that men that are, that are filled with lust don't have things going on in their mind that are improper and inappropriate and, 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 and that in the right situation, the right circumstance, they would fall. So don't be picking on just individual Jezebel. I'm not even talking about that right now. I'm talking about something bigger, but Jezebel is a type of what I'm talking about. King Ahab married this woman Jezebel. We don't want either one of them. I don't want to be no Amnon. We don't want no Jezebel up in the church. But what I'm trying to communicate to you right now is bigger than that. Jezebel seduced God's people and moved them away from God. She gave them Satan's favorite religion. Truth intermixed with lies. Right. Just enough truth to draw you in. Just enough truth to bind you up. Just enough truth. To where the Holy Spirit won't really flow. Her name from that point becomes associated with harlotry through the rest of the Bible. Her spirit seduces believers away from God. Now this is so important. I need you to get this. If Elijah represents the spirit of prophecy, Jezebel represents the spirit of harlotry and the war wages. I need you to see it. I need you to see the spirit of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of truth, the spirit of error. You don't want me to say it. I know you don't. But go ahead. You're probably going to do it anyway, some of you. Go ahead and turn your secular music on today when you leave the church, if that's what you choose to do. Go ahead. Crank it up a little bit. But do me a favor when you do. Listen to the words that it sings to you. Pay attention to the message that it preaches to your soul. Yes. Listen to the lyrics. If you're still listening to it, go ahead. Give attention with your ears and hear 
when it's speaking into your inner man. Amen. And listen to the message and the spirit of error. Yeah. For you out there in the audience that might watch on video, if you find yourself repeatedly <clears throat> messed up in pornography, messed up in fornication, messed up in adultery, messed up in alcohol, messed up in doing drugs, messed up in a violent life, then I suggest that you do, that you listen a little bit better to what you're listening to. Like I told those young people the other day when they came into the clinic, and, and I was trying to talk to them and I wasn't getting through. So I did it. I broke down with my little rap song and I, I don't remember what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I told y'all before, treat that woman like a piece of meat, pour the bullet in that copper's teeth. I mean, come on, like, is that not what it is? Oh, now I got their attention. Because that's what the spirit of air is singing in hip hop industry. Right. Treat a woman like a piece of meat, like she's nothing. Like she's a piece of trash. You use her up and you throw her away. And sex is free and YOLO. You only live once and do what it is that you want to do. And it ain't nothing for the spirit of violence to just fill people up. And they got no soul anymore. Yeah. People have no soul anymore. Used to be young kids that were impoverished that they wouldn't want to just shoot somebody and step over their dead body and maybe wipe the blood off of their foot onto the shirt. That's what we're living in. And it's not accidental. This is what they're feeding us. Demonic spirits are rampant in the air. Whether you believe it or not, my friend, it shouldn't be that hard to figure out. If you've been around for a little while, this world has changed over the last 20 years. People have no God consciousness. They, they could care less about other human beings. We need help. You go ahead. You keep watching them shows. I know what the Lord told me. I'm not sitting there. I, you, don't get mad at me. Let the Holy Spirit tell you when to quit watching Yellowstone or whatever you're watching today. I'm just trying to make a point. That when you start to see in every single series that's on television, multiple homosexual relationships, and now they're sticking in there. Transgender relationships. It is not an accident. Amen. It's Jezebel. Yes. It's the spirit of error that is preparing the way. And God is looking for the spirit of Elijah to rise up. One man. Come on, church. Right. Listen to me. There's not going to be one man. But one man is one man willing to stand up and allow his mouth to be filled with the spirit of prophecy. And to speak forth. And to say, hey, hey, choose you this day whom you will serve. How long will you limp between two gods? You're either going to choose to serve the God of Israel or you're going to serve the God of Jezebel. But you're going to make a, you're gonna make a, a, a choice today. And fire fell from heaven. And I believe with all of my heart. As these days grow darker, the Holy Spirit's about to pour his spirit out upon his church. He's about to wake her up. And with signs and wonders, he's about to show this world what, what, how it's going to go down. But listen to me, friend. If you think you're just going to be skateboarding through the park, like just chilling like that, I don't think that we say, hey, see, we in America, we don't got lazy, my friend. We don't got so lazy. We think, oh, we are spoiled rotten. Thank you. No, really, I'm not trying to fuss. I love America. You think I want to be born in Venezuela? I've been there. No, I don't. I love Venezuela. I had fun. I love Mexico. Praise God. Y'all pray for God. He's going to Tampico Thursday. How long are you going for, brother? Uh, Ten days. Ten days. Pray for our brother. I love Mexico. I do. I love those people. I'm glad I wasn't born in Mexico. And I don't mean that any luck. The guy will tell you he's a U.S. citizen. He's happy to be a U.S. citizen, I guarantee, but he's happy to be able to have a, an opportunity to go to Mexico. You get the point I'm trying to make. I've been to Europe. I don't want to be European. I turned 10 in Singapore. I don't want to be Singaporean, if that's even a thing. <laughs> I'm glad I was in America. Amen. But listen to me. If we think that it's just going to stay all copacetic because we got so many Christians praying in America, please help us. Yes. Help us. Yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Help us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us to pray. I want to encourage you people that have been praying in this church. I can't tell you. I keep saying it, but I can't thank you enough. 
people that are showing up before services, people coming on Tuesday nights, coming on Friday nights. I can't thank you enough. I know some of you are probably praying in your home. The spirit of prayer has entered this church. And if we keep praying and we keep seeking God and we keep asking for hunger and thirst, listen, I, he is changing people in this church. He's changing people's hearts. He's changing their minds. He's changing people's families. It's a little bit at a time, but he's doing it. I know he's doing it because y'all are all calling me and telling me what he's doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you know what you do is you yield yourself. You, you know what the smart thing to do as a Christian is when you see this happen? Okay, Lord. I see what you're doing. Here I go. I'm going to change positions and I'm going to lower myself and put myself under your authority. I'm going to line myself up under the authority of God. Oh, but I love, I don't have my black one. Oh, but I love this thing. It feels so good. It's my blank. And I want to hold on to it. You know what I'm talking about whenever you got that thing in your flesh and your flesh loves it because it may. And, and then, then look, I'm not trying to say you got a demon spirit. You only, look, if you saved you, I don't believe you got a demon spirit. Like, you, I don't believe you possessed by no demon spirit for sure. But I believe if you open up a door, you allow the demon to spirit. And he ain't trying to leave, my friend. But guess what? He ain't got no choice to leave. That's right. Because when you as a child of God that have the spirit of God on the inside of you choose to truly lower yourself under the hand of God and you repent before your king, I'm telling you right now, demonic spirits come shrieking off of you, out of you, wherever they might be, and they're going to flee in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. They have no power. Over the name of Jesus. So we're talking about the spirit of Elijah. We're talking about the spirit of Jezebel. We're talking about this harlot and the beast. And how the dragons plan for the final deception against God. At the time Elijah accompanied with great signs and wonders. God used the prophet's mouth to force his people to choose between him and the God versus the God of Baal. And the time of playing games was over. In 2 Kings chapter 2, really I'm just going to read uh, verses 9 and 13. <clears throat> this, is a, this is a passage where, where Elijah goes to heaven. Y'all remember the story? Elijah gets caught up in a whirlwind. Type of the rapture, by the way. I don't have time to make these connections today between Elijah versus John the Baptist, who had the spirit of Elijah. Interesting into their lives. Maybe one day we'll be able to talk about it more. And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And then if you read the story, Elisha was taken up in a whirlwind. But you know what happened? Elijah's mantle fell. And I've been praying in this church. I've been praying in this church that the mantle of Elijah would fall upon this church. But listen, not just on this church, because I know the heart of my Lord. The heart of my Lord is saying, I want the prophet's mantle to fall on my whole church. But I've been praying that the prophet's mantle would fall upon you. Just as Moses spoke. So many years ago, I've been praying that God's prophet's mantle would fall upon this church. And Elisha saw it. And he picked it up. And when he picked it up, he had received his double portion. I've been praying that the mantle of Elijah would fall upon this church. And I've been praying that the double portion anointing of Elisha would fall upon this church. And I've been praying that the words of Moses would come to pass. And that the spirit of prophecy would come upon his people. And that they would begin to prophesy with the mouth of the prophet. Because God's not looking for just one Elijah. He's looking for multiple Elijahs. To stand up and to allow their mouth to be used as an oracle for God. How am I going to do that preacher? You start off just like you did this week week. When you found somebody that you ran into, you start to tell them about Jesus. Right. And you keep coming to prayer. And you keep asking that the oil of his presence would fill you up. And the more of his presence that shows up, you're going to notice a little bit more anointing. A little bit more zeal. Starting to burn on the inside of your belly. And before you know it, you'll be witnessing to one person and you'll look around and there's ten of them listening to what you're saying. And the Lord's going to start using this people in this church. And he's going to start using people in the church across this earth, he's going to start awakening his sleeping bride because God is about to come That's right. 
The Bible tells us that the spirit of Elijah was the spirit that rested on John the Baptist. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. This is the last prophet, by the way, of the Old Testament. Many of you are probably familiar with that. After Malachi's prophecy ends, there's 400 years of silence. Not until Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, and we'll talk about him in a moment, the spirit of prophecy is silent for 400 years. But this is what God tells Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now listen, for you that are Bible students, I'm not going to get into this right now, but I want you to pay a little bit closer attention to that passage when we may not have paid that much attention to it in the past. Look at the specificity of the words. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Was it manifest 2,000 years ago with John the Baptist? Yes. yes. You ever heard of a double reference prophecy? I'm pretty sure there's one hidden in there, and I'm pretty sure it's saying exactly what I'm trying to talk to you about today. Rising up Elijah's for that before that great and dreadful day of the Lord. After Malachi, 400 years of prophetic silence. And after 400 years of silence, the angel of the Lord comes to Zacharias while he's burning incense as a priest in the temple and tells him that he and Elizabeth will have a child. Luke 1 and 17, it says, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah or Elias, the King James says, same man, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I'm trying to get you to understand that the same thing God did at the beginning of the church age, I believe in my spirit. He's about to do a double portion anointing at the end of the age before the great and terrible day of the Lord, before he pulls his church off of this earth. He's about to pour his spirit out and he's about to increase the mouth of the prophet and he's about to bring home the harvest. I believe that. How many times have we heard the story throughout the scriptures of supernatural birth? Abraham, Sarah, too old. Zachariah, Elizabeth, too old. Jesus, born of a virgin and Christian new birth. Amen. I'm going to rip through these scriptures pretty quick, but I'm trying to get you to see whenever Zacharias, they tried to say, Elizabeth told him because his mouth was silenced, right? Because he refused to believe the word of the Lord. His mouth was silenced. And then, and then Elizabeth, whenever the baby's born. Look at Brendan back there holding that little baby. Because look, you need to get a visual of that. Hold that baby up in the air like that. Well, come on, you can do it. Just hold that baby up a little bit. Let everybody see that baby right there. I want you to see that. Because I want you to have that image in your mind when I'm about to talk to you. Because now the baby's born. And, and, and Elizabeth's out there with the baby. I don't know. Zacharias might even be holding the baby. They're like, what y'all want to name him? They said, John. What? There ain't no John in your family. That's what the angel told him he was supposed to name him John. And because he didn't believe it, he shut his mouth. Whenever Zachariah starts to speak, it, or Elizabeth it says it, and he writes it down, his mouth is open and he begins prophetic utterance. The spirit of prophecy hits Zacharias's mouth. Hallelujah. For the first time in 400 years, the spirit of prophecy returns to the nation of Israel. And this is what he says, verse 69. Luke chapter, oh Lord. Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 1, verse, verse 69. I believe this is it. Let's see if this is the right one. Yes. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That's talking about Jesus. A horn represents strength. The strength of salvation from the, from the house of David, which was prophesied that Messiah would come. You got to understand, they didn't understand what was going on like you and I do. That verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all that hates us. Listen, Jezebel hates the people of God. Right now, while he is prophesying, Israel is under Roman domination. They're holding them in bondage. Listen, the spirit of Antichrist is the same. He ain't changed. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the spirit of Antichrist is still trying to hold God's people down. And it's about to get worse, church. You think it's not going to get worse when God pours his spirit out? It's already getting worse. They just, I don't even know if it's true, but I just put, posted that thing on the text church deal. They, they just, they're talking about passing laws in Israel where if you say the name of Jesus and you get caught, they're going to imprison you for a year. At least one year. That's Israel. Help us, Lord. 
Verse 73, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. That oath comes out of Genesis 12, comes out of Genesis 22, 16, whenever Abraham took his son, his only son, to offer him as a sacrifice. And God provided a lamb that day. He provided a ram in the thicket, a sacrifice. He said, because you have done this thing and you have not withheld from me your one only begotten son, I will make your descendants like the stars in the sky. And like the sand on the shore. And the apostle Paul said that seed was not many. But it was one which is Christ. And through Christ. Look at this seed right here. Just look at this little small church. And look at this group of people. You my friend. Are the seed of Abraham. Because he is the father of faith. Before the law ever was. The covenant was promised to him. That the Christ would come. Through his lineage. And here he's saying it right here, 2,000 years ago. Verse 74, that we, he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Verse 75, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Now look at this, verse 76. Now he's talking about John. He says, and you, child, y'all saw that picture of Brendan holding that baby up? I can see Zacharias right here holding that baby. And you. Look at this, you child shall be called the prophet of the highest, for you shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. You got to understand the context here. In the real world in these days, when a king was coming to visit a province that he was ruling over, they would send a messenger before him. The messenger would go before him and he'd have a scroll. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Prepare ye the way. Prepare ye the way of the king. Make the path straight. Make the path flat. Prepare the way. John the Baptist was a voice crying out in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. For the first coming of the king of Israel. I want you to hold on to that because that's part of what God's about to do when he pours his spirit out. I believe this with all of my heart. He goes on to say in verse 78, through your tender mercy, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. Now listen, for you that are Christians today, nay, even for those of you that have seen and broken through, where the Lord has helped you to break through, where you're starting to experience freedom, and that's not anything against anybody else. Some of you might be Christians and you're still in the struggle and you can't quite see the light yet. I want to tell you that the light is right around the corner. But for those of you that have seen the glimmers of the light and have seen some of those bondages from your past break off, do you not know what he's talking about when he said the day spring, the dawn, when the day star rises in your heart, when the light of God begins to rise on the inside of you, and you know, you know what Sister Tilly used to say? I know that I know that I know that I know. I know. I know. Got to know her. I got to know her in my know. I know I belong to the Lord. Because the day spring. Can you imagine what life would be like right now for those of you that know what I'm talking about? Has he never come to you? He never told you about the goodness of Jesus. See, some of you watching on video, some of you in this place right now, I'm telling you right now, y'all probably think I'm quiet. Y'all probably think I'm fake, dude. You need to drive your tears up, you little faker. You don't understand. You don't understand my Jesus. You ain't tasted and seen that the Lord is good. You still, come on. I'm not trying to pick on nobody. I'm trying to tell you like it is. If you can't feel what I'm trying to talk about right now, then your feel is broken. You need to cry out to the Lord to give you some feeling. You need to cry out to the Lord. Let the Lord have his way in your heart. So that that day spring, that dawn, that day star can start rising up and it can start illuminating. The truth of God on the inside of your heart. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people. Lord God, that you'd cause the day star to rise in your heart. That you'd allow the anointing and the truth of the gospel to begin to break through. And to begin to let them see, Lord, please. Please. Verse 77, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. 79. 
to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Have you, have you found your peace yet? Because I got to tell you that we've been talking to you about the Prince of Peace. But you can talk about the Prince of Peace. You can listen about the Prince of Peace. But you got to find the Prince of Peace. How do you find the Prince of Peace? You humble yourself. You let your flesh be crucified. You repent of your sin. You ain't got to repent right here at this altar. That's up to you. But you got to repent somewhere, my friend. That's all I'm trying to say. I had a couple of phone calls with people like, and, and, and I, I was proverbially speaking you, that all of you have an appointment with this altar. I didn't mean literally this altar right there. But what I did mean was you got an appointment with the altar of your God yes. where you and the Lord do business yes. between yourself. <laughs> Where you yield your heart to him. Where you crack your chest open. I'm not talking about, I used to say it all the time. And maybe it's irreverent, but Britney Spears had a song way back in that, oops, I did it again. That ain't what I'm talking about. No, I'm not talking about some simple I'm sorry. I'm talking about when you start to recognize how much you have grieved God's spirit in your life through your disobedience. Whatever it is that you've been disobedient in. I'm just here to speak the truth to you, my friend. I'm here to tell you what the Bible says. It's your job to go seek it out for yourself to see what I'm telling you is true. But I got people in here that can witness and testify to the fact that when they yielded their heart at the altar of God. And when they began to repent of their failures and their disobedience and their sin. That the Lord began to smear oil on their heart. He began to pull that heart of stone out. Replace it with a heart of flesh. And he began to restore the oil of presence. And the joy of the Lord started to come up on the inside of them because Peter said it and the book of Acts, he said that when repentance comes, so does time to refresh. You want times of refreshing in your heart? You want to feel peace? In your heart, I, I used to say it all the time. I'm getting tired of saying it because it's old stuff that I used to preach. But I live my life like the Jerry Springer show, man, for so long. No, really, and some of y'all still living like that. I'm talking to you on the video. Some of y'all still living like the Jerry Springer show. Somebody walk up in your house right now, and that's what it would sound like, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Lord, help us. Amen. Let us learn to yield. Yes. All that hollering and screaming, all that chaos, man, it ain't going to do nothing but steal your joy. That's a symptom. You can put your pretty face on up in the church, right? I can try to put my pretty face on up in the church, but, but we know. We know how we act in outside the walls of this church. And if we're out there acting more like the Jerry Springer show, we got a problem. We're not yielding to the spirit of God. We need to let God have his way. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he did. And so we will. I'm talking about John the Baptist. You child shall be called the prophet of the highest. You child John the Baptist with the spirit of Elijah. You will go before him and you will prepare ye the way of the Lord. And so he did and so we will. I'm talking about the church of Jesus. I'm talking about this church right here. It's just the beginning. The Lord's going to pour his spirit out and the message is going to be repent and prepare ye the way of the king is coming back. And I can promise you, if you start under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, talking to people, and you start to wake them up a little bit. I'm not telling you to literally slap them, but if you start, listen, yeah, you ain't got to use my words. You pray and ask the Lord to tell you what to say. But that's what I've been telling people. Hey, do you see this stuff going on in the world? Hey, wake up. I'm talking to you. Hey, do you see that? Yeah, I see it. I see it. What do you think it's all about? Oh, it's the global elitists trying to control the population. Okay, why? Come on. You think that they're not hungry for money? No, it's a satanic agenda. Okay, the Lord, you know what? I don't even want to talk about the devil no more. But let us understand what we're in the midst of. Let us understand what we're dealing with. And let us promote the gospel of our king. Because he alone is the answer that this sick world is needing. He preached the baptism of repentance, of remission of sins. And in the spirit of Elijah, the message of Malachi and Isaiah, the voice of the Lord now will say to you, us, today's church, will be a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. The world and the governments that were in power at that time hated his message. I'm talking about John the Baptist. I'm talking about John the Baptist 
under the spirit of Elijah, the government and leadership of the day in Rome hated his message. I don't know if that girl at Stazion liked what I said. I don't even know if the guy last night, you might be watching because I gave you a cord and he's a Christian. And I had shared with one dude yesterday and then all of a sudden this young dude and he looked pretty cool. I was watching him through the days. I never really got to talk to him. But I walked into the back back there because I had a second and they were all back there huddled up. Some people that I had been talking to about the Lord before. And I saw him. He was on his phone and he was showing him stuff. He said, dude, this is called MK Ultra." See, some of y'all don't even know what that is, but it's like mind control stuff that came out of World War II with the CIA and all this stuff. And I'm aware of all that. It's all part of the game. It's all part of the plan. And he's over here saying certain things. And bro, look, I love you if you're watching. And, 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 he, and I said, well, I don't know what you know, what you think about spiritual realm. But what I understand about MK Ultra is that they would, they would cause repeated traumas to people and they would cause their personalities split off and they would attach demon spirits to these various personalities and they'd have a handler and they could put them into motion. So now you got a shooter. All you got to do is have a code word. Sandy Hook. I'm, am I saying that that's definitely what happened? I'm just telling you. Sandy Hook. Boom. Then the phone rings again. They say something else. Boom. And he comes out. Dude, there's so much documentation that shows that. So he's talking about that. MK Ultra. And I said, I don't know what you know about spirit. He's like, dude, I'm a Christian. I'm all in. I said, well, then why does your mouth sound like that? Oh, wow. He's like, huh? What you talking about? Your mouth. I would have never known you were a believer the way you were just talking. He's like, oh, dude. Man, I had a problem with that. I had a problem with that. And when it was all said and done, I said, hey, man, if I came across a little strong, I definitely don't want to come across as a high as a spiritual hypocrite because Lord knows I got growing to do. But he's like, no, nah, man, you were right. I said, can I pray for you? He's like, absolutely. Dude. So I laid my hand on him and I prayed because he said, I want to get back in the word. Amen. I laid my hand on him. I prayed. You know what? He, he got my number before he left and he texted me last night. He said, thank you so much for praying for me. Oh, I that. Amen. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like the Lord is looking for us to get right. And they did not like John the Baptist's message. Because he know he told, you know what this man had the audacity to do? He told the king, what you're doing is wrong and you can't do that. What are you talking about? You shacked up and married your brother Philip's wife. You can't do that. And you know what? Herod, Herod's wife got mad. Now, it's not, not interesting. Hold on. This is a big message, but I need you to understand it. Herod an evil king, married to an evil woman named Herodias. Ahab, an evil king, married to an evil wife named Jezebel. Herod doing wrong, and the prophet tells him that he's doing wrong. Elijah telling them they doing wrong. The spirit of Jezebel hates this. The voice of error hates this. The spirit of Antichrist ain't changing. He hates it. And in this day, when you and I begin to speak the truth, they're going to hate it. The world is going to hate the voice of truth. The days of thinking, and I'm going to say it because it's true. The days of thinking that it's okay to get a key to the city and you host the Easter egg hunt for the community as a church are over, my friend. Or they need to be over. Because this is not what God has called us to do. God has called us to preach the truth. God has called us to allow the spirit of Elijah. This thing is real, my friend. We're not playing games. This isn't time for the relevant church. The relevant seeker sensitive church. People like that girl at Stazione, they'll just think that they're okay. They'll just glide through life in a thousand people and a membership of a thousand people when everything, when the message is so, so careful not to offend anyone. They will sit in that chair and they will continue to live a life of sin and Jesus will come back and they will have been asleep and they will have thought that they were okay. And God is not pleased with that. God wants the truth spoken. He wants that because he's holy. What have we learned about the Holy Spirit? I know we've been holy. knowing it, but he's holy. What is about the Holy Spirit? Holy. He's holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. And he said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Yes. And the good news is this. Listen, no more monkey shine, my friend. If you're a believer and you're saved, 
and the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you, you can yield yourself under the authority of God. Yes. And you can repent and the Holy Spirit can empower you. But you got to start listening to the voice of the Lord. And you got to start operating in the fear of God. And you can't keep submitting yourself. I can't keep submitting myself to fleshly lust that war against my soul. I can't sit there and allow something to happen that's going to steal my salvation is going to allow demon spirits to cause confusion and deception and war against my soul. I can't afford it anymore, church. You say, well, I don't look at internet pornography and I don't commit fornication and I'm not committing adultery. Well, what are you doing, my friend? And maybe you're not doing nothing right now. Maybe the Holy Spirit, because the Lord knows he's been showing me all kind of, I did something the other day that I, and it's just, the, the more I listen, the more smaller details he's talking to me about. Amen. Help us, Lord. I don't want them. Amen. We have an advocate with the Father. I tell you these things, little children, so that you may not sin against God. But when you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. But it's not, oops, I did it again. It's sorrow of heart. Brokenness of spirit. Yes. To this one will I look. He is of a contrite heart and trembleth at my word. The true king fulfilled his prophetic mission. He went to the cross and there he offered his sinless life in the place of sinful man. His sinless sacrifice produced a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of God because it was salvation for all mankind. Three days later, he rose from the dead. The resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. 50 days later in that upper room, the Holy Spirit descended in cloven tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost. And a revival broke out that changed the world as we know it. Acts chapter 2, verses 17 through 18. Peter, you know I used to pick on Peter? Because I love Paul so much. And now I'm just like, wow. I'm just going to be real. The Bible says give honor where honor is due. Brother Kirk. Come through here and, you know, I have questions. Stuff. He's a man of God because I can tell you, like, I, <laughs> that brother just took it on the chin and he handled his business. But, but let me say, you see an anointing on a man's life. And now I'm, I'm starting to recognize. And then I'm sitting at the table. Brendan knows what I'm talking about. Solomon. It's like, oh, my gosh. And then when we went to go eat at the at Chafalaya, I turned and I said to somebody, I said to Naya, imagine Peter. Dude, imagine the apostle. He just failed the Lord. He had just denied Jesus very times. And the Lord restores him. He looks down at that. He preaches his message about the fire of God, about no, these men aren't drunk. This is how it was prophesied by the prophet Joel. In the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. And your old men, they will dream dreams. And then he walks out of there and he sees that lame man at the, at the big gate, beautiful. And he's begging of alms. Alms for the poor. <laughs> Silver and gold have I not. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And he straight away stood up and walked. And leaping and praising and giving joy to God. And then the Bible says he's walking in the anointing of the Holy Spirit and his shadow, his shadow, just being cast. People getting healed by the shadow of the apostle Peter. It ain't Peter. It's the Holy Spirit working through Peter. He's a conduit. He's a vessel that the open heavens are flowing through him. I'm here to tell you, church, I believe in hallelujah with all of my heart. We're about to see these things as times move forward. Forward as the prophetic clock keeps on ticking. The Spirit of God is going to pour out and He's going to use us. Hallelujah. Forgive me. Forgive me for questioning your friend Peter that walked with you by the Sea of Galilee when I was so enamored by this intellectual Paul. And I love me some Paul. Who's ever heard of getting beat five times with whips, three times on the head with a rod, shipwrecked and left in the water overnight, beaten up and left naked in the cold, stoned one time and left for dead. You know what he did? Stoned, left for dead, got up, shook himself off. Let us go to the next time and preach the gospel. For this is why I came. 
these men of God. What? Lord, give us that. Give us that in these days. Hallelujah. That's the Bible, my friend. That's the Bible. Strobe lights and smoke machines. That ain't the Bible. That's the Bible. Peter's voice of prophecy, Acts 2, 17 and 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. You're going to prophesy. And listen, let me say something. Prophecy, it does. It predicts the future. But you know what else it does? It forth tells the truth. It forth tells the truth. It lets others know that Christians don't talk like that, my friend. Because the word of God says it, not because Pastor Matt said it. Pastor Matt is just a conduit that lets the word of God speak by his grace. Christians don't keep on doing what Christians been doing. Christians serve the world. Oh, but we believe in a secret, sensitive, relevant church message. I told them that that other day on that text. I'm not going to read it again to you. I'm like, listen, I haven't been in it, bro. I've been to the big, the big kind of churches. I've seen this relevant movement in the youth. I told y'all about that pastor one time. It's not important what his name was. He said, it's all right. Your kids are over there in the youth ministry, and they got somebody talking to them in their language. Wicked, wicked, wicked. What is that? That is not the spirit of prophecy. That is not the spirit of truth. That is the spirit of the world infiltrating the church, trying to draw sinners into the walls of the church and cause them to become conformed, fashioned by what we say they should look like instead of letting the Holy Spirit draw people, the Holy Spirit convict people, the Holy Spirit drive people to their knees and they repent and they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and he changes them, and then he fills them with his spirit, and then they go out, and then they begin to speak, and the church would be added to daily with signs and wonders following them. Hallelujah. Elijah's mantle is falling on this house, church. I believe that. Elisha's double portion is being poured upon this house. And so it was in the beginning. So shall it be at the end. The Lord has spoken and he shall not lie. Elijah's mantle was falling on this house. Elijah's double portion anointing has been poured upon this house. And not here only, but all across this earth. The spirit of Elijah, the spirit of prophecy that is sent to confront the spirit of Jezebel. That mantle is beginning to fall. Are you understanding what I'm saying, church? Are you understanding what the Lord is saying here? Moses' prophecy will come to pass on God's people. I would that all God's people would be prophets and that the Holy Spirit would be upon them. Singers, musicians, you can come. I want to conclude with an image that I keep seeing in my mind. I'm not telling you it's a vision. I've already said a little bit of this to you, but I keep seeing it in my mind. I can't get it out of my head after the first time in prayer that I felt like the Lord showed it to me. I keep seeing it. And I don't really know exactly what it looks like, but it, I can only imagine. I can't imagine really even what a glorified body looks like. You know what I'm saying? I know this much about a glorified body. It's not contained by walls. And I keep seeing in my mind's eye, the Lord and the armies of heaven are behind him. And he's in his glorified body. His hair is white like wool. His eyes are aflame with the fire of judgment. He no longer holds the candlesticks in his hand, which represent the church, is because the church age is over. Maybe, I don't know, he has this white stallion's reins in his hand. See, the Bible says he's seated, but at this time he's standing up. And maybe he's holding the reins of his stallion in one hand, and he's got a sickle in his other hand. It's the sickle that he will reap the vine of the earth and put them in the wine press of the wrath of God. And he's peering upon Armageddon. And the armies of heaven are behind him. And he's not, he doesn't have a real joyful face at this time. Because he knows that the age of grace is over. 
this was not the day that he was longing for. The day that he was longing for was the day that he would see you. That you would make it and he'd be able to tell you, well done, my good and faithful servant. He's just waiting a little bit longer, but it's not because any more can be saved. There may be some scattered few that survived in the woods somewhere, but for the most part, he's about to rain down judgment on those that have received the mark of the beast. And there's a sword that protrudes out of his mouth. And whenever he gets, I see, I hear it in silence. Maybe I used to think that the armies of heaven behind him were hooting and hollering. I don't see it that way. I feel as though they're silent because they can feel the awesomeness about that's about to happen. Wrath and judgment, a grieving slaughter upon rebellious man is about to happen. The valley will be filled with the blood. He is clothed in a vesture dipped in name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Through that sword, he's going to smite the nations that have rebelled against him. The Bible says that the blood is going to rise to the horse's bride. There's going to be people in that crowd. I talked to y'all about that a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if we'll be able to recognize them. But there's going to be people that sat in churches that are going to be part of it. Rebellion that they were deceived and that they received the mark of the beast. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Holy Spirit, I pray that as they begin to sing this last song, Lord, that you would minister to our hearts, Lord, that those that might be watching out there, you can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't have to receive the sword of judgment that's coming out of his mouth. You can receive the word of life that's coming out of his mouth right now that lets you know that even though you've been in rebellion against him right now in your mind, in your heart, you can say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Jesus, I believe that the Father sent you to pay the penalty of my sin. Jesus, I invite you in. No longer shall I keep you outside knocking. Lord, I open the door to my heart. Please come in. I receive the truth of the gospel. Please forgive me of my sin. You don't have to face the judgment of God, child of God. You can receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you will pray that prayer, you will feel the Spirit of God warm your heart. You will feel the Spirit of God save your soul. Your life will never be the same again. Holy Spirit, witness salvation to those souls right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, witness salvation and your hope to us right now, right here, as we worship you in Jesus' name. Yeah, I'll see you tonight.